you know, they'd invite me out. There'd be like a party every Wednesday, like, you know, every Friday, every Saturday. There's always something going on. Friends are DJing and there's just so many events. Like it's Los Angeles, so there's always something to do. So constantly, you know, being asked to go places. And of course I'm going to go because it's probably fun. Who doesn't want to drink? And yeah, whatever. So I would go. But somewhere, you know, within all these going outs and stuff, like something switched and it just didn't, like it wasn't fun anymore. Like I would find myself at these events just like waiting, like, you know, anticipating going home, like figuring out how I'm going to make my exit. Like, you know, just kind of like feeling even anxious. It's like, why am I here? Like I started asking myself, like, why am I out like every Wednesday and like Friday? Like, why am I holding a $20 drink right now? Why am I, why? What is, what is this, what is this reason? So Thanks, yeah. I just decided like, don't go. How about, how about just don't go? You're not missing out on anything. You have these feelings every single time you go out. Like, why not just save yourself and maybe the people that you're rubbing off this negativity to, like, save the night and just stay home because it's honestly going to be so much better for you. You can think and, you know, just do something else and be something more productive and you can socialize with these people outside of a bar setting. Like, there are other things you can do with your friends and if you can't think of something, then I don't know if you guys are friends then. But yeah, don't let the fear of missing out stop you from sitting your ass at home because you're not missing out on shit. Yeah, and the crazy thing is a lot of older women give younger women the advice to have fun, have your fun, go out there in your 20s. And, and we all know basically when they say have your fun, that means basically go out there and if you want to be a thought, be a thought. Don't worry about what people say about you. Have fun and live your life. But she's 30 years old. She's attractive. She looks young. She's 30 years old. She probably doesn't have any children. Uh, and I don't want to say she wasted all those years, but she pretty much wasted all those years of having fun instead of starting a family now she might not want to start a family you know I, I, some people don't really want to do that um but if she was to try to start a family now now she's 30 years old and she realized that all the things she thought she was missing out on and having fun and partying doing type of things like that it's not fulfilling it's just it's just not fulfilling at all um is it good to do it every now and again i can see if you were like in your early early 20s like 19 to 21 22 years old you know what i'm saying but after a while, you realize it gets repetitive. It's the same thing over and over again. Friday night, Saturday night clubs. And the club is really basically a, a meetup spot to hook up with different, you know, intimately with women, men and women hooking up with each other. And it's just the same thing over and over again. And after a few times, you realize, isn't there more to live for than this? Isn't there more to live for than just this? And you know what I'm saying? So that's why a lot of people try to, a lot of guys are, that's why Kevin Samuels, one of the reasons I believe he was trying to tell the young women, like, if you're 24 years old, old 23 and 24 it's like the best time to find a husband you think that oh live your life have your fun in your 20s once your 20s are up they're up i'm not saying ain't nobody gonna want you by the time you turn 30 and, and, and up but let's just be real your prime years are in your in your in your early in your, in your 20s a female's prime years are in her 20s as far as beauty and attraction and you know just things like that and as far as f fertility you know what i'm saying like she really wants to have a family trying to have a family when you 35 36 37 38 it's just it's, it's more difficult White men just come with less bullshit when it comes to dating right now. And all the pick me's that want to stand up for the black man, this is not me dissing the black man. This is me about to give you some facts. White men just come with less bullshit when it comes to dating right now. And all the pick me's that want to stand up for the black man, this is not me dissing the black man. This is me about to give you some fucking facts. Okay? I am a feminine dating coach. I get on these dating apps on a regular and I coach these women, right? This is a prime example of what's going on right now. This young lady, she is on Bumble. She is mirroring, which means she can see my screen, I can see her screen, I can see the whole conversation. She is talking to two black guys and one white guy because whether you believe it or not, black men, you are our first preference. We do want to be with y'all, but y'all just be on some bullshit. So the first black man, 47 years old, wants to talk about social media dating culture. She says, I'm not interested in talking about that. Tell me something about, you know, tell me something about you, right? And he's like, okay, so what you want to know? She said, what's your favorite cuisine? He said, you know, I really don't care, right? And she says, okay, well, what's the last place that you went out to eat? What do you like to do? And he was like, you know, it really don't matter to me. Not having no type of dialogue, not asking her ish, right? I said, fuck him, move on to the next person. Second black guy, right? She said, oh, you're not too far from me. We've been talking for 24 hours. I can't wait to physically meet you in person. Do you ever plan on coming to town? He said, oh, I'll let you know. Okay, you're not really making me feel too special. The third guy was a white guy. Named Ross. 
Rose has not only been talking to her consistently. They have finally decided to change of exchange like text now numbers. This man has booked a restaurant reservation at a very nice, I wrote down 4.5 star wine lounge. They serve wine. They say they serve lounge, um, drinks and food and stuff. It's so nice. White man, 47 years old. Same age as the first one. He has already in less than 24 hours moved forward with a date. Talk to her consistently. Ask questions back. He asked her about her favorite, um, her favorite food before she asked him. He asked her about, uh, can you show it up for me? She can see me right now. Okay. He asked her where was she raised? He asked her, um, about her family and he started mentioning stuff off her profile. Like he was inquisitive. The black, y'all not, Y'all ask us why we go, why we switching races so much, but it's just like the proof is in the dang on pudding. This one white man has done more than these two black men combined. So this is not me. I don't want y'all to think I, I hate black men or anything like that, but it's just like y'all make it freaking difficult. Y'all say, oh, we, we're difficult. No, y'all are the difficult ones. Y'all really are. Nobody's about to kiss your ass. Why kiss your ass when she can go out with Ross? You know what? She's about to literally about to pick out a nice dress, about to go to a nice restaurant, have a good time with a guy named Ross who is 47 years old and a doc. At least that's what his profile says. You never really know. But I just, I don't know. I, I have no freaking clue what to say at this point. Like, I'm just, I'm just disappointed in y'all. <laughs> Well, um, see, this is one of those things where no matter how many times I say it, women are always going to rebuttal me when I say this. A lot of black men, we were raised by single mothers. Since we were raised by single mothers, we actually know how to treat women good. What happens is we are in high school or we go to college, we treat women nice, and we realize they don't do nothing good. The ones that y'all usually be attracted to, it'd be the football players, the basketball players, the frat boys, anybody with status, chivalry. Like when we treat you, guys nice and this has been a lot of people from my community experience when we treat you guys nice we're too nice you guys are too nice it's i don't know i don't know if you could protect me because you're too nice i don't know he just, he's he's a nice guy but in, and y'all literally go with the pricks that go with the pricks and then you wonder we, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results then you wonder why even though we were raised by women to respect women and treat them a certain way once we realize it doesn't get us anywhere not saying not respecting women but as far as just like being super kind to women once we realize it doesn't get us anywhere we say as men we're logical we say what has been successful oh the way Pookie and Ray Ray act with her so I'm gonna act like that with her she didn't say but I'm pretty sure that the female she's talking about if the guy if the if the if the white doctor dude is 47 years old i'm pretty sure that the female she's talking about who she's dating i mean she's a coaching to date is also in her 40s as well there's so many nice guys out here that women just bypass and the, the percentage of men who are either 30 year old and virgin or they haven't had sex in the last year is astounding which shows that y'all have about 60 to 70 percent of guys who are either single and have not had sex within the past year or virgins that y'all can choose from and y'all just walk right past them then when y'all go outside of the community and somebody actually treats you nice which i'm pretty sure the guy's a nice guy when they treat you nice, you you respect it from somebody else, but you don't respect it respect it from us. I don't know if, if it's a money thing, the, the nice guys ain't have enough money. I don't know what it is. So we don't mind you guys going outside of the culture and you know doing what you gotta do. A lot of men are going outside for the passport. I mean, passport bros are going outside. You know their culture as well. A lot of them are doing that, and I don't see a problem with it. Matter of fact, I don't see a problem with it either way. You know, it seems like we're not getting anywhere. With all this arguing and bickering and going back and forth and stuff like that i see why the passport bros exist not getting anywhere this is annoying so if you gotta go outside the culture for some peace it makes sense either way either the woman go and do it go outside the culture and get a man that makes her happy and the man go outside the culture and get a woman that make him happy it don't matter as long as you're happy at the end of the day they're humans they're humans they're <laughs> what's the issue cool because obviously this is seem like it ain't going nowhere y'all it's a, and it's annoying very annoying